Crossfire Sierra Squad launched today on PC and PSVR 2, and it's been a real mixed bag of an experience, so let's get right into it. In an attempt to talk about the positives first, Crossfire Sierra Squad is a pretty game. It doesn't reach the heights of Horizon, but it does hold its own. Playing this coming off of countless hours in Firewall Ultra though, one thing is clear, and that this game is pretty bright at the sacrifice of visually stunning lighting effects. What it lacks in dynamic lighting though is made up for in atmospheric weather effects. One of the campaign missions in particular, where you're going through what I assume is a Russian city that has lots of lush greens and rustic vehicles, all while raining as you make your way through dilapidated buildings and outdoor areas, looks fantastic. Likewise, when you're in the colder environments, you see your breath in the air and the gun has developed frost on it. Honestly, all of the guns look really great, which is really impressive given the relatively large amount of guns that are in the game. Aesthetically, Crossfire looks like Killzone and Call of Duty had a night of mistakes and their shame of their activities came nine months later. Most of the enemies look like they're in need of some American democracy. Meanwhile, some of the heavier enemy types look like they auditioned for the Hellgast army and even the leaders over there thought they were a bit too much. I'm not really into the character design choices, but at least it all looks graphically nice and they do have some good variety to them. The only question I have is if this was a graphical glitch or this mission was supposed to have some sort of night vision element. I mean, I tried restarting, but it didn't change anything. It does look super cool, just a vastly different style than the rest of the game, so it was a bit confusing. And there really wasn't too many other glitches other than maybe clipping through the map once or twice at starting a mission, but easy enough reset, just restart the mission and it was back to normal. But in the vein of glitches and out of place looking levels, the audio design of the game is where it starts to reveal its uneven even nature. Some of the vocal recordings sounded just fine, and then some of them sounded like the actor said the line, the audio track peaked, and they decided they didn't want to do another take, leaving us with distorted tracks in our ear holes. Uh, uh, sniper! It also would have been nice to have some music that didn't sound like stock assets. I feel like a little bit of quality music would have really elevated some of the action sequences in this game, but luckily what you hear the most is gunfire, and all of that sounds really nice and accurate, whether it's the bassy shotgun blast or the more echoed sniper shot. Guns sound and feel nice, which is good for a tried and true first person VR shooter. And within the genre, it doesn't do too much to change what's been established in the past, but it does have some elements that make it a really smooth game to play. Off the bat, the game has tons of different weapons and every single one feels really impressive, especially the shotgun feels just phenomenal. Even if I think that they have a bit too far of a range, it's very satisfying to use. Something else that I noticed early on was that it's much easier to fire from the hip with assault rifles and SMGs instead of constantly aiming down your sights like in all these other VR shooters. Now I'm sure there's some form of aim assist in this and that's why you can probably actually get away with playing like this, but I enjoy enjoyed it a lot actually. Crossfire also features sniper rifles that have a steadying feature and I'm now convinced that every VR game should have this on their sniper rifles because it makes it look so much better and it's way easier to actually take a shot. Now some people out there will probably say get good it's not realistic or immersive and in all honesty you're the type of people that's probably not going to like what I'm about to say next. Reloading in the VR space has been controversial the last few days because Firewall Ultra released and VR purists are upset that auto reloading exists at all. Well, Crossfire Sierra Squad strikes a good balance between the manual and automatic reloading options by making you grab out the ammo from your belt and bringing the fresh magazine to wherever it goes on the gun and then the game just does the rest for you. This was a lot more natural, it still gives you the action of kind of doing something to manually reload a gun, but then it kind of takes away the rest of the more janky parts that VR, in my opinion, still hasn't quite nailed down. A lot of you are going to disagree with me, but that's just my opinion and, uh, you know, I personally don't care what method a dev uses, I do believe in having options for people to play the way they want. And I'm going to be honest, I really don't care because the last few days I've been having a ton of fun in Firewall, even though it has auto reloading and I've had equal amounts of fun in Pavlov with the fully manual reloading. This just strikes a good balance between in my opinion. What I am currently missing though is the eye tracking for grenade throws. Crossfire lets you hold three at a time and you can grab them off your left arm. It works well enough. I just think I'm generally a terrible shot with grenades in these types of games. I don't know if I just never let go at the right time, but they always just kind of flop to the ground or don't 
don't go where I'm really anticipating them to. Regardless, along with your three grenades, you can also holster three weapons, one over each shoulder and one on the front holster. Then your right arm holds a health syringe that you can use if the situation turns dire. The gameplay is honestly really tightly knitted and one of the best parts of Crossfire, with the only real oddity being that your health, grenades, and ammo are infinite, with the exception of a few special weapons like rocket and grenade launchers or the minigun. This is fine in the easier modes, but it does persist even in realism difficulty mode, which is quite bizarre. Even if it is helpful, it just doesn't really pair well with the idea of realism. Just like getting 100 likes on this video isn't very realistic, but you know, I would still appreciate if you just popped down there and just gave it a little clicky do. And if it's over 100, you know, you already scrolled down there, you already did the work, you might as well, you know, help me out. So I'd appreciate the crap out of that. Thank you. All right, I'm glad you're with me because from this point forward, it goes downhill a bit more. So just be ready because Crossfire's campaign mode contains 13 missions that can be completed in less than three hours. While the game does feature a few standout levels and environments, it really struggles to actually evolve past a wave-based shooter. Despite you walking throughout levels and progressing forward, it always feels like a giant shooting gallery or tower defense game with unintelligent and overly scripted enemy AI that will come from the same path every single time you play. It's made even worse by them almost exclusively beelining towards you in the worst possible way, and I wouldn't even bother to venture off the beaten path too much because not only are there no collectibles or interesting things to see, but a majority of the time you will have walls that remind you you're not supposed to go that way, and this makes an already linear experience become even more apparent. You may be asking though, how is the actual story? Well, it's there. I mean, will I remember it after today? Probably not because it's an experience that we've all seen before. However, I feel visually and some of the twists, if you can call them that, reminded me a little bit of Modern Warfare 2. I mean, it's a pretty standard military conspiracy story until the very end. Also, I'm going to kind of spoil the story. So if you care that much, you can skip to the timestamp on the screen now. But if it's any consolation, I'm writing this like a few hours after playing the game. And I will literally probably have some details wrong because it was truly that forgettable. After finding a bizarre coffin like crate in one of the earlier missions, you start to find clues that some sort of a super soldier program conspiracy is going on or something like that. I honestly wasn't that engaged, but one of your informants who is about to give you information gets shot in the head before giving said information to you about what's going on. Then later you infiltrate an enemy base and find some secret sauce that we all know is probably doing something really gnarly to the people that use it. But in the second to last mission, the one that looks really bizarre in my gameplay footage, you fight the creatures that this serum created. Because as if the tonal shifts weren't already weird enough, screw it, let's throw in zombies for one fleeting level and not have them in any other parts of the game at all. Makes sense. All right, that was the spoilers. And any of you who listened, feel free to comment down below on if you think you really missed out on anything knowing that classified intel. So yeah, the story's pretty goofy and not anything to write home about. It's also very short, but there is a reason to make it through the campaign, and it's so you can get 5,000 credits to purchase weapons and attachments in the shop. But more importantly, this unlocks realism mode, which adds a lot more difficulty to the experience. The question is though, do you even want to use realism mode and play that campaign again? Well, at least we have two other modes to try out. Horde mode is currently only one map, and it's like any other horde mode where you will face enemies in waves as the difficulty increases each wave and I think this mode could be enjoyable as it gets more challenging and if you have a full squad. However, the other reason I would say could be fun is because the only level we have right now is way too limited in scope and it really doesn't help when you have this really good pinch point for super incompetent AI to keep dying in. <laughs> There really isn't much else to say about horde mode right now other than to me it's really boring. All right, I'm going to try to bring you back up from that depressing bit of content because the squad missions are actually pretty good. Even though squad missions share a similar structure to the single player stories, they are a lot more fun. And that's because you can group up with friends to play them. And out of everything, I personally think that this will hold the most content and the most fun of the entire package for the general audience. And I think this is because there's more variety of missions and they also remix some of the maps in really creative ways, like using the last level's bridge 
along with one of the campaign's infiltration areas to make a bigger feeling level that is almost entirely blind because of a snowstorm. You literally have to use weapons with heat sensing weapon scopes to actually get through this level without being obliterated and this was such a welcome change and even if I haven't played every single one of these missions, uh, from what I have played, it really excites me to keep going and unlocking more of these. I will also mention that I did beat one of these on realism mode, and while it was insanely frustrating, it was so rewarding when I did finally beat what would probably be a 5 minute mission in a full 30 minutes later. And yeah, most of what I see myself coming back to in this game is these squad missions, whether it's with or without other players, and just grinding through that realism difficulty. With all that said though, I think my biggest problem with Crossfire Sierra Squad is that it feels very flat, and that's in every aspect from the story to the gameplay. It's just something that we've seen before, whether on the flat screen or VR. It feels like a visual and gameplay mix between a kill zone and Call of Duty experience, yet it's left out the competitive multiplayer component, which is really what will make this game live on into the future. And I know I've mentioned a lot of other games in this video, and I do think it's normal to, you know, play a game and think of others like it. However, it's not a good thing when you constantly get reminded of another game and you almost want to play that more. And if I'm being honest, this is what happened to me a lot during my time with Sierra Squad. It has some fun gunplay, a wide variety of weapons, and a attachments, technically it has a decent amount of content and more horde levels are on the way. However, I could never shake the feeling of wanting to play either Firewall Ultra or Pavlov and I generally do prefer single player experiences over multiplayer. But when the experience is just not as engaging or enthralling as it should be, it's really not crazy to think that that FPS craving could be satisfied elsewhere. I'm just also really confused to where all these elements lead to since you have a player level, you can make custom loadouts with weapons and attachments that you buy with credits earned by completing the story and squad missions, but really for what? Is it so you can play the same content again in realism mode with a custom loadout, or is it so you can hit the level 50 in horde mode? It honestly doesn't make sense to me, even if realism and squad missions are the highest points of the game right now. It feels like there is no end game or purpose by the time that you'll have all these weapons and attachments, I don't think you're going to have any content left to enjoy it in. So in the long run, I think Crossfire Sierra Squad has some really fun and solid gameplay with gorgeous environments and a great variety of weapons, but it's stuck with a subpar and short campaign, less than stellar enemy AI, and not enough content to keep players coming back for more in my opinion. So I mean, unless you're okay with spending $30 on what I described in this video, or you have friends that maybe also want to play with you, I really wouldn't recommend it right now. And as sad as that is, because it has a lot of fun gameplay mechanics, it's just a reality that the content doesn't prop up that gameplay the way it should. Either way though, whether you buy it or you skip out on it for right now, I would highly recommend that you post a comment down below saying what you think of the game or this video to help me further along. Plus, I'd just like to have you around for the next video, which might be popping up on screen right now. But until then, I will see you in the next video.